I noticed something recently. While seeing Lawrence of Arabia in my local indie theater, something that has connected two of my favorite films, the C-96 Mauser, one of the earliest semi-automatic pistols, which is also one of my favorite historical weapons. And it made me think, is the C-96 Mauser secretly one of the most influential props ever? Before I get into the influence it has on the film and television world, here's a little background on the weapon and its influence on history. The C-96 Mauser was created by famous German arms manufacturer, Mauser, from 1896 to 1937. It is a semi-automatic pistol that could be changed to a sort of rifle hybrid by attaching its wooden holster to the back of the handle, giving it one of its many nicknames, the broom handle Mauser. The pistol itself was initially very popular amongst British officers prior to the First World War. One of these such officers was Winston Churchill, who used one at the Battle of Omdurman during the Second Boer War, and it was even used by the real Lawrence of Arabia, T.E. Lawrence, during his part in the Arab Revolt in the First World War. On the other side of the military scale, the C-96 played a vital part in the 20th century revolutions that still shape our world today. In 1911, it was used by Peter Pyaktov and his gang that held the siege on Sydney Street in London's East End, giving the pistol the nickname Peter the Painter. In the 1916 Easter Rising, the C-96 was used by Michael Malone, part of the Irish Volunteers, the precursor to the IRA. Volunteer Michael Malone and other volunteers picked off around 220 British officers, resulting in one of the only military successes in the Rising, the Battle of Mount Street Bridge. As well as the Rising and the Irish Revolution afterwards, the C-96 was also used for the executions of the Russian imperial family in 1918 and the Russian Revolution that followed. Keep those Bolsheviks and the communists in front of your mind. If you already don't think the C-96 Mauser is influential enough, just wait until you hear the films it appears in. The C-96 made its film debut in legendary silent film director F.W. Murnau's The Finances of the Grand Duke in 1924, the only comedy made by the director of the famous Nosferatu. Nosferatu! After its debut, the C-96 took a specific and surprisingly for films historically accurate turn, as the pistol would go on to appear in a variety of Russian Revolution and Soviet films from the 1920s until the 1990s, like 1927's October, Ten Days That Shook the World. The first massively influential film that featured the C-96 Mauser was Alfred Hitchcock's original The Man Who Knew Too Much, from 1934. The Man Who Knew Too Much even has an action sequence based on the siege of Sydney Street, mentioned previously. In 1962, it would appear in this scene from Lawrence of Arabia. A year later in the James Bond flick from Russia with Love, and would appear on the silver screen in 1967 with old blue eyes, Frank Sinatra himself as a modified sniper weapon in The Naked Runner which goes on to play a vital role in the development of the weapon's already massive influence ten years later. For the most part, the C-96 Mauser was found in period pieces, historical adventure, or spy films, which still has a through line today. And despite being in some of the most iconic films, it had reinvented itself in a rising film category, science fiction, and provided the spark for two major science fiction characters' iconic blasters. Buck Rogers, and Han Solo. In the 1930s, Buck Rogers became the first massively successful science fiction franchise, with comics, radio programs, and so much more. Rogers was equipped with a various number of atomic weapons that were based off the C-96 Mauser, as you can see the similarities between the original and these pistols here. Buck Rogers and his contemporary, Flash Gordon, are known as the impetuses behind the creation of Star Wars, with Flash Gordon being a little bit more so. But without the C-96, everyone's favorite smuggler, Han Solo, would have had to rely on Chewie and Luke a little bit more. During the production of Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, 
George Lucas set the challenge to his crew, consisting of set designer John Barry and set decorator Roger Christian, to come up with a new but familiar and lived-in looking material culture. The team turned to British armorer Bapti & Co, whose smith Carl Schmidt was hired by Barry and Christian to turn very real weapons from the First and Second World Wars into ancient and very worn blasters from a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Schmidt chose a C-96 Mauser with a scope that was lying around in the shop from a prior production and kitbashed a few other elements onto it. Due to some eagle-eyed fans studying every bit of the original trilogy VHS tapes, the basis for Solo's blaster was in fact the same C-96 Mauser that Sinatra used in The Naked Runner. Due to its scope's positioning, the modified bull barrel that was added, and some dents in the weapon. In every Han Solo blaster toy, beneath the scope, flare tip, and other features is a C-96 Mauser. Without knowing, millions of kids and action figures have sported a C-96. The C-96 Mauser would continue to make its mark on popular culture by returning to the historical adventure films and period pieces it was once featured in. It liked Lucas and Harrison so much it decided to star in Raiders of the Lost Ark and in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Continuing on with the World War II past, it would be the choice of firearm for the titular hero of the Rocketeer in 1991 and throughout the Mummy series. The C-96 Mauser returned to its historical roots in Irish Revolutionary War and Civil War period films like Michael Collins and the Ken Loach masterpiece The Wind That Shakes the Barley. More recently, the gun has appeared in films such as Wonder Woman and Kong Skull Island, as well as massive television programs and video games such as Peaky Blinders, Penny Dreadful, and Red Dead Redemption 2. The C-96 Mauser is without a doubt one of the most influential firearms throughout history, and in addition to the infamous deeds that it had been used for, it can now claim that it has the largest, or at least one of the largest, influences in entertainment. If you like this new addition to the channel, please let me know. I really appreciate the subscriptions, and if you would like to see more content on films, click the box below. Thank you.